the two big ideas that we'll see as common themes throughout this course, looking at ways to solve these two questions of how to manage resources and how to provide abstractions to make it so you can write programs. And the biggest challenge in creating abstractions is if you provide a very high level, easy to use abstraction, that means you're hiding lots of details. That's a challenge to be able to provide those easy to use abstractions without sacrificing too much control. And you need control for many things to get the kinds of efficiencies and flexibilities that you want. One of the things that you'll get from this class by starting to understand more what's going on at lower levels when programs run is ways to be able to control things to get more efficiency and control than you could get if you just use the high-level abstractions. Do we feel like we have a good enough definition of an operating system now that we can actually try and answer this question about things? So does it have an operating system? So this is the first computer that I had a chance to program on um, well before probably all of you were born. Um, Apple II. Does it have an operating system? If you load one on it, okay, that's a good point, right. So by itself, it's just hardware, right? If you're not actually running anything on it, if you just have this physical box and it's not plugged in and it doesn't have anything loaded in its memory, um, it doesn't have an operating system. So I should give you a sticker for that. But now let's assume we actually have an Apple II that does have some software loaded on it. And we can, say, run a game on it and we're running programs on it. Does it have an operating system? So it had something called an operating system. Right? It was called DOS. I think it stood for Disk Operating System, sort of like MS-DOS, which some of you are probably still running in some form. Um, and in terms of our definition, so did it provide a way to abstract resources? So it gave you a way to write programs that could read files without knowing the details of how the hardware worked on the disk. So it definitely provided that abstraction piece. Did it provide the management piece? How would you decide whether it does or not? How many programs can you run at once on this machine? Yeah, yeah, just one, right? Um, so it was really designed for one user running one program. So by our definition, it's not an operating system. And it does, one of the things an operating system needs to do, it provides abstractions, but it doesn't do anything to really manage resources. Every program that runs owns the whole machine and can do whatever it wants to the whole machine. So there's no management of resources being done. Okay, what about a car? Does that have an operating system? About how many operating systems do you think are on a typical car today? Yeah, 10, 10's a pretty good guess. Probably somewhere around, probably closer to 20. Um, but all of these electronic control units have operating systems, right? Everything that, whether it controls the anti-lock braking system or the accelerator or the music system or the windscreen wipers, all of those things have uh, electronic hardware controlling them and have some kind of operating system. Um, it's usually either a variant of Windows or uh, QNX with sort of real-time Linux. Um, so you might wonder how often your operating system in your car crashes. Um, it doesn't crash too often. Uh, at least you better hope it doesn't. Um, and it's got lots of operating systems and it's got a network connecting them all. Um, and in terms of the managing resources, well, they, they definitely need to worry about that. Right? You need to worry about making sure the right programs are running at the right time to make things happen with um, pretty important uh, real-time requirements. So I have a few more tests for this that I'm going to hand out to people. So who wants to try figure out if something has an operating system? OK. Some people must want to play with toys. Like if, if I stole my daughter's toys and people don't actually learn something useful from them, that would be very tragic. Uh, let's see, what else do we, oh, this is a good one. The farm mashup. Try putting like the, the cow pieces in. Uh, let's see, we have a few more. Remote control. No? No takers? There we go. Okay. I do want these back, by the way. And oh, you know, I forgot to give you the the, the farmer. No wonder. 
show is having a hard time. You need these pieces to actually plug in. You need a farmer to drive the tractor, of course. Oh, and we have the cell phone. Now, some of you have devices, some of you don't. Uh, did anyone actually figure out how to turn theirs on? I, I know you're not uh, as experienced as my daughter with computing devices yet, but hopefully you can actually figure out how to use these. Does anyone for sure think they don't have an operating system? OK. It's, yeah, so it's, why, do, why do you know you don't have an operating system? This, this I, I would agree with you. This most certainly does not have an operating system, right? It's you press the buttons. It's a direct hardware link to something that happens. There is no shining lights or flashing noise. Does not seem to be do any, doing anything other than a very simple mechanical um, connection with no real abstraction. There's sort of an abstraction, right? Certainly for um, a baby to figure out how to play with this toy, um, what it really is teaching about is abstraction, right? That when you press the blue button, that pops up. Right? So, so there is an abstraction. There's a, a disconnect compared to you know, playing directly with this. Um, but I don't think it has an operating system. OK. So do any of the other toys have operating systems? So first question is, can we, can we actually decide by playing with it, right? So our, our two requirements were that it has to provide abstractions and it has to manage resources. So are there experiments that you can do with the toys to figure out if they provide abstractions? Good, yeah. Right, so you can't really answer that question, right? So if, if what we mean by provide abstractions is provide abstractions to programs, that run on the devices, there's no way you can really be certain doing external experiments on them. Right? Without knowing how they were programmed, you don't know if the programmer was writing it as a, when you put in, did you try the putting in a match yet? OK, right, so this is one of my favorite tests. So if you put in, okay, so if you put in two that don't match, it'll tell you they don't match. And if you put in two that match, uh, there's a fun song. It'll tell you other interesting things. Okay. So um, just by playing with the toy, we can't really tell. You know, did the programmer who created that you know, write some high-level thing that says, if the two pieces are yellow ducks, play this audio file? Or did they build a hardware circuit that sort of senses when it's a yellow duck and another one that senses when it's the back of the yellow duck and connects those to some you know, random switch that decides which thing to do when you got that match. Right? Just looking at you know, playing with the device outside, we can't really tell the answer to that. Right? We'd have to know more about how they actually built this or find a way to sort of get inside and see what code is running on it. Yeah. I'll, I'll interpret the question as, what's the difference between whether the code is running as a hardware circuit or running as software running on a general purpose processor or running as dynamically generated hardware on an FPGA or running some other way, right? So, so and that's, that's actually a really good and deep question, right? So I'm talking about these things like, well, if it was baked into the hardware to make that sound when the yellow duck goes in, that means there was no operating system. Um, and that doesn't necessarily mean the programmer didn't create it at a high level and then it got compiled down to hardware that's running. So it's um, a pretty solid question to decide you know, where do we draw the line between what's actually running when a program executes and the process of creating it. Um, and when we're asking this question about does something have an operating system, we're asking it in the context of what's actually running. Right? So if there was a, you know, a lot of high level abstractions that you used to design this toy, and then you ran some fancy circuit generating tools and, and other things on those, and it produced you know, a piece of hardware that implements the toy, um, even though you were using a lot of abstractions to build it, what's actually there when you're running it is there's no operating system left. It, it took away all those abstractions to create the hardware that you're actually running. Whereas if you're um, running your, your SD card and it's taking a request to the SD card and running code at that time to figure out how that maps to a location on the card, well, that's happening at the time that you're running it, so it's part of an operating system that's actually providing that abstraction dynamically while it's running. 
So that's, that's the distinction I would make between if you had abstractions when you're designing it versus if they're still there when it's running. Anything that you can use as a resource, right? So the memory, the screen, the speaker, all of those things are resources that the machine has. Um, and I guess I would say to manage them, there has to be something that decides how programs can use those. Right? Um, with the Apple II, you can write code that uses those however you want. There's nothing in between you and the resources. So as a, you can write a program for an Apple II, you know, with assembly code on the Apple II that reads any location in memory you want, that puts anything anywhere on the screen that you want, that does anything you want with the, the speaker or, or the sound card, um, that has total access to all the resources. So there's nothing mediating between you and the resources that you want. Okay, so it sounds like we can't really answer the question whether the toys provide abstractions without getting deeper inside them. Um, and I would guess probably about half of these toys actually do, um, but you'd have to look a lot at, more at how they were constructed. And part of it, you can see these companies that make these toys can make you know, 50 toys that are basically the same toy. Um, so they're reusing a lot of their, their infrastructure for that. Um, in terms of the question of whether they manage resources, are there experiments that you can do with the toys that would help you answer that? So let's see. So who has the remote control? Okay, so press it. Go ahead and press the button. Is it on? Okay. What happens if you press a button before the first one finishes? <laughs> That's so much better than an Apple II, I have to say. Like, it was, it was a rough life when I was a child. I, but, um, uh, so I, yeah, I, I think you're probably right that it's only running one program. Right? Um, it does have something like an interrupt. Right? So it doesn't finish playing an audio file if you press a new button before that one finishes. Um, so there's definitely at least hardware interrupts going on that allow it to stop something in the middle and do something else. Um, and the Apple II also had, had things like that, because you could press a key and something would happen. Right? So um, that gives you some idea, and, and this is where these definitions are sort of funny. Right? So um, at some level, it is managing resources. Right? The re speaker's a resource, and there's something that controls what gets to use that, or the sound player is getting controlled and being managed to do one thing at a time. Um, but probably nothing that's, that's really mediating, mediating resources the way a, a more sophisticated operating system would. So make sure I get all the toys back. 